Hi folks, this is more fun stuff to do with the 555 timer chip circuit. In this case, an automatic music player and an easy way to solve a maze. I'll start with the maze solver since it's quick. In my first video on how to make the 555 timer circuit, I showed this simple music keyboard. It was simply a wide pencil mark on a piece of paper. Notice what happens when you run the playing wire along its length. The frequency increases as you go in this direction. Now here's the maze I made by simply drawing on paper with a pencil. The idea is to find the path from start to finish. You could just find it using your eyes, but what about using your ears? We clip one end of the 555 timer circuit here, and then move the playing wire along it from the start. If the frequency goes down, then we're headed in the wrong direction, away from the finish. If the frequency goes up, then we're on the right path. Ta-da! Next up is this music player. You simply pull this piece of paper with holes in it through this section here, and the 555 timer circuit plays music. How does it work? I'll take it apart so you can see. Here are the pencil marks. Notice that they're all connected together with carefully made pencil lines, and it all leads to this mark here. I'll connect that to the 555 timer circuit. I can still touch them with the playing wire coming from the 555 timer circuit. You can hear that each mark represents a musical note. Notice that the marks are just like the long line of my original musical instrument, just a little more rigorously done to give more accurate notes. Then there's this. There are 11 pencil marks, and for each one there's a loop of bare wire hanging down from these thumbtacks. They're all connected to this one wire going to this alligator clip. I'll put it down so that the wire loops all touch their marks. Then I'll fix the whole thing in place with these rubber bands. And then I'll connect the playing wire to the alligator clip. And now you can hear the sound. So instead of one playing wire touching one mark at a time, I have 11 of them. I'll unplug the circuit for now. Next I have this long sheet of paper with holes in it. All these holes represent the first part of the song, Green Sleeves. I'll put the paper in place. As I move the paper along, you can see it exposes one mark at a time below it. When it does, the playing wire loop for that mark makes electrical contact with the mark. I'll plug the 555 timer circuit back in so you can hear it. I'll pull the paper along. The holes are even different lengths, so the notes will be played for shorter or longer times. I want to talk a bit about how these marks were all chosen to represent the notes so well. For this one from my first video, I just made an even width line and divided it into 14 same length segments. That doesn't represent the notes very well. There's actually a formula you use for the 555 timer circuit to get it right. In case you haven't watched the first video, this 555 timer circuit sends square waves to the speaker. The waves can be high frequency ones like this, or low frequency ones like this, or anything in between. In that video I pointed out that one thing the frequency depends on is the resistance of the pencil mark from this alligator clip to the playing wire. But it also depends on the resistance of this other resistor called R2 and the capacitance of this capacitor, called C1. Here they are in the circuit diagram that I used in that other video. The formula for the frequency it puts out is this. With this formula, given the resistance of this resistor R2, and the resistance of this pencil mark, and the capacitance of the capacitor C1, we can calculate out the frequency. For those unfamiliar with musical notation, the notes are given various letter names in combination with other symbols, though I'm using just the simple letter ones. Looking on my piano, I'm using C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then repeating the letters one octave higher, C, D, E, and F. We already know the frequencies for the musical notes. We look that up online. What we want to know is what resistance to use for the pencil marks. That tells us how long and how thick to make those marks in order to get the notes. So, using simple algebra, I rearranged the formula so if we know the desired frequency and capacitance of this capacitor and resistance of this resistor, it'll spit out the resistance needed for the pencil mark. Ugh, what a hideously complex formula. So I plug it into a spreadsheet and forget about it. In this column are the names of the desired musical notes. In this column are the frequencies for each note. And the formula is in this column. It displays the needed resistance for the pencil mark to get that frequency, or note. Just to be clear, those resistances are what's needed from the alligator clip to the playing wire. At the top here are the capacitance for the capacitor C1 and the resistance for resistor R2. These are what are used in the formula. They're there so we can easily try different values. The negative resistance values just means that R2 is too big. If I make R2 10 kilo ohms instead, for example, then the numbers become positive. So here I'm making the marks. 
I do that by hooking the alligator clip to one of my meter probes and with the meter on a suitable resistance scale. I put the other meter probe on the first mark for the first note and draw until I get the desired resistance as given to me by the formula in the spreadsheet. Then I move the meter probe to the next mark and draw from the first mark to the next until I get the desired resistance for that mark. Notice that it ends up being just a blob. This is horrible. The problem is that all these resistances are too close together. But by playing with values for R2 and C1 in the formula in the spreadsheet, I find that if I set the capacitance for capacitor C1 to a smaller value, I get resistances that are much farther apart. Digging around, I found that I had a 2.3 nanofarad capacitor, which is 0.0023 microfarads. And plugging that into the formula, I get these resistances for the marks. They're nice and far apart from each other. So I remove the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, which I'd used in my other video, and replace it with the 2.3 nanofarad one instead. And when I draw on the paper while measuring the resistances to get my new resistance values, I get this. Much better. And hooking it back up to the 555 timer circuit, and using just the playing wire, I get these crisp, clear, and separate notes. I put the spreadsheet on my website and a link to the page that it's on in the description below this video, in case you want to make one yourself. And here's the machine reassembled and being played. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more fun videos like this. That includes the first video I kept referring to, the one that shows step by step how to make this 555 timer circuit. Another on using rainwater to power a piezoelectric crystal and light an LED. And one on using a Fresnel lens from a rear projection TV to make a solar cooker. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. More, give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.